Our question is, could you explain how excess protein is metabolized by the body? Important questions. We eat so much protein in this country, uh, especially our omnivore friends who are eating lots of uh, animal muscle. A lot of protein goes into the body way more than we need. The body only really uses about 20 grams of protein a day. You can see a penny weighs three grams, has about seven pennies worth of, of protein, yet we eat, you know, the, multiples of that every day uh, when our people are eating their chicken breast and burgers, et cetera. Uh, they're clipping along at 50, 60, 70 grams of animal protein or more. And the body cannot store protein. Uh, it's got to use it. Uh, protein is, uh, as you know, a long chain of amino acids. Uh, the body will break the bonds in between and take the individual amino acids and, uh, and send them to the cells to uh, rebuild membranes and make hormones and do all those things that cells need protein for, need amino acids for, actually. But there comes a point when all those needs are met and there's still more protein pouring into the bloodstream from that uh, well, either chicken breast, but even lentil stew uh, that, uh, that you eat, what happens to the excess protein? Well, as I said, we can't store it. Uh, we can store a little bit of carbohydrates uh, in the form of glycogen in our muscles and our liver. We can store lots of fat, uh, and infinite amounts of that, but we can't store protein. So what really happens to it? Well, it gets sent up to the liver like most everything does in the body after it's absorbed from the intestine. And what does the liver do? If there's enough protein in the blood and in the tissues, uh, then the enzymes in the liver uh, take those amino acids. And uh, sorry for the biochemistry here, but what makes an amino acid, it's a little chunk of a carbohydrate with an ammonia group, an NH3, nitrogen with three hydrogens on it. So what happens? Well, pull off that ammonia group deaminate it, uh, and you're left with a little protein with a little carbohydrate fragment that you can throw into the furnace of the Krebs cycle and burn for energy. And that's basically what happens. Uh, people eat too much protein. Uh, most of it uh, gets turned into carbohydrate. You burn it for energy. If we've got enough energy in our you know, enough stored uh, glycogen in our muscles, uh, our body temperature goes up an eighth of a degree and we uh, radiate that extra heat off to the, to the atmosphere. Uh, so we don't store protein. The, um, the problem, however, is that ammonia group that comes off. So if you're eating just tons of protein, and this includes vegan protein powders, you wind up generating lots of ammonia. Those, uh, those uh, ammonia groups off the amino acids uh, build up. The kidneys can handle it, but they've got to go into what's called hyperfiltration gear. Uh, and it increases blood flow to the kidneys, sometimes not in a healthy way. And there's concern that as the years go by, high protein diets can wind up uh, damaging the, uh, uh, the kidneys from this hyperfiltration state. And also a big bolt of protein makes the liver respond with a surge of this powerful growth hormone called insulin-like growth factor one, IGF-1. And so high protein diets make people walk around with lots of IGF-1. Uh, so what? Well, if you're a grown person with, if you're a woman with low breast, early breast cancer or a guy with an early prostate or colon cancer, the last thing you want is a high protein diet uh, making you uh, turn out lots of IGF-1 because it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. So all the way around, when it comes to protein, more is not better. Uh, trust a whole food plant-based diet. There's plenty of protein in the grains and the beans and the various legumes and even the green vegetables, et cetera. Get your protein from there. It's a very modest amount. It's absorbed very slowly. doesn't cause a big IGF-1 response from your liver. And it really is the... Uh, is the food, the plant-based food we're meant to run on here. So, uh, so stay away from the animal protein and the protein powders. Get your proteins out of the lentil stews and the bean tacos and all the healthy uh, plant-based protein sources and excess protein won't be a problem for you. So uh, hopefully uh, that answers the question. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.